Well, good morning, church. I hope you're having a great Tuesday so far. Uh, this last week, Pastor Brandon jumped into Daniel chapter 3 in our new series and, and was talking about these men who endured some pretty crazy hardship because they stood up for their faith. Now, before we get to talking about them, we're going to focus more on their attitude on things on Thursday. I wanted to reflect on what we can learn from King Nebuchadnezzar, who is not someone we want to reflect. You see through the book of Daniel, he makes a lot of bad choices. Uh, it's pretty obvious. But as you look at this first part of the story, he, it's pretty obvious how prideful he gets. He builds this statue and he wants everyone to be there to see how great it is. And then he, he's easily convinced into having it be this thing that people literally bow down to and worship. And so if you look at the discussion questions, number two says, what can you do to prevent pride from swelling in your heart? How do we learn to walk humbly with our God? As much as we would like to step back and look at Nebuchadnezzar and go, that's just ridiculous. I would never stoop to that level. It's pretty easy for us to fall into being prideful. It's just our natural go-to. We look out for ourselves. We want what we want. And a lot of the time we just go with that. And, and so how do we make sure that we're not being prideful? Well, I think number one, be in God's Word. If, if you're reading through this, the Bible, it becomes pretty apparent really fast that we mess up a lot. <laughs> I think we easily start judging some of the characters that we read about, these people, including Nebuchadnezzar, but throughout the Old Testament. I mean, you read Adam and Eve, and you're like, come on, guys, you, you had one thing you couldn't do, and you, you did it. But the reality is we need to remember we would have done the same thing. As crazy as it may sound, being on the outside looking in, we would have messed up just like they did. And so first off, we need to recognize exactly where we're at, that God is so much greater than us, that He is literally perfect. He hasn't messed up the way we do. And God's Word is what screams that to us. And so being God's Word, that helps to, to make sure that you're not becoming prideful. But I think another important step to that is having people in your life that will call you out on it. And I, that's not an easy thing. Sometimes it's easier to have people in your life that maybe they'll let it slide and, and just puff you up even more. But, but we need people who care about us enough that they would say, maybe you need to take a step back and think about your motives behind this. Or maybe you need to think, I feel like you're getting a little prideful here. I think you need to take a step back. Now, it needs to be someone that you trust to do that, not someone who maybe really dislikes you, because they're probably going to say that a lot. But if you have someone that you're genuinely close enough with that would challenge you on things, have meetings with them on a regular basis where then you can be there for each other, hold each other accountable, and maybe even study God's Word together to help focus how you need to change in your life. In the, in the last area, it, it may sound like another church answer, but pray. Be praying, God, open my eyes to the things I'm doing that are prideful. What things am I doing that I'm putting myself in your place? Because essentially, that's what pride is. We're, we're putting ourselves in the place that only God should be in our lives. So hopefully, this question is, is one that challenges you a little bit. What things can I do to evaluate my pride? Because all of us have it in our lives. Whether, whether we see it or not, it's there. And so we need to make sure that we're trying to, to open our eyes more and more to what things am I prideful about and how can I change that? We'll see you Thursday.